In this video, I'm going to be talking about the signs and warnings I get when I'm probably about to be catatonic. Catatonia is something I deal with as part of my mental illness, and it is something I'm formally diagnosed with. As a result of having it, over the years, I've gone catatonic so many times that I've lost count. But because it's happened so much, I've learned to recognize the signs that tell me it's coming on. And that's what this video is about. And if you are new here, my name is Kit, and the whole reason I get catatonic at all is because it's part of my schizoaffective disorder, which is a condition where someone experiences symptoms of schizophrenia, such as delusions and hallucinations, but also symptoms of a mood disorder, either major depression or, in my case, bipolar. Catatonia itself is a motor dysregulation syndrome that's usually characterized by immobility and mutism, and this form is called stupor. There are other forms, but this is the one I'm going to be talking about today because it's the only one I've ever experienced. It basically means that when I'm catatonic, I can't move or communicate in any way, and my whole body is basically paralyzed. And if that sounds terrifying to you, I will not disagree because it can be very scary when it happens. But while I've talked about what happens while I'm catatonic on the channel before, the moments leading up to it are things I haven't covered yet. And really, in the beginning, I had no idea when catatonia was about to hit. But as more time passed, I learned the signs. And I can confidently say now there are two key warnings I get. The first way I know it's coming is that I'm experiencing immense anxiety or panic, specifically enough to cause anxiety or panic attacks. Now, catatonia does not cause anxiety in the moments leading up to it. That's not how it works but it can happen as a result of those emotions, and that's how it is for me. So in my case, anxiety causes catatonia, not the other way around. I jokingly call catatonia a restart mode because it's like my brain gets so overwhelmed that it has to shut down and start back up again. Much like a have you tried turning it off and turning it back on again situation, just with the human brain. But anyways, if I'm having an anxiety or panic attack, I know it's probably coming. Because it almost always happens, and that's just how it is for me. The other warning, a different kind, happens when I get catatonic out of the blue. Meaning, not associated with an anxiety or panic attack. This out of the blue catatonia, and I hesitate to call it that since I still do have some warning, occurs when I'm actively in schizoaffective episodes, meaning I'm experiencing mood or psychotic symptoms that are typical of my disorder. So I'm already kind of in an intense emotional state, which is probably why I'm more prone to catatonia in the first place. But what's different here is that my brain gets a little bit fuzzy and a little bit cloudy, and I get a little tired before an episode sets in. I don't want to sleep. I just get really weary in a way, and everything starts to seem just a little bit heavier. At this point, I can still move fully, but I know from experience that once I feel those head fuzzies, then if I stop moving at any point, the catatonia will kick in and I'll freeze wherever I am. So if I feel that sensation, I try to get to a safe spot where I can actually freeze. And I keep moving all of my body parts until then, and I kind of do this weird little wiggle that's really hard to explain, but just imagine you're trying to keep every part of you moving just a little bit at all times, and that's what I'm doing when I'm in this state. Because again, if I stop, I am frozen in whatever position I'm in, no matter how impractical it might be. Most of the time, I land on a bathroom floor in the most comfortable position I can manage. Then, what I do is pretty simple. I just quit moving, let it set in, and let the catatonia happen. I often don't worry much these days when I'm in active catatonia, which sounds a little weird coming from the fact that I'm completely paralyzed and helpless and unable to do anything. But I've been dealing with this for years and have a lot of experience with how it affects me. And so for me, my episodes, they're really only minutes long and they don't require higher levels of care. But I do still let someone in my support system know it's happening when I realize what's going on if I can, just in case I don't unfreeze in a timely manner. But I always do, so I hope I always will. I wish I knew why the head fuzzies happened. I wish I knew why my brain needed to restart itself whenever I start panicking. But I've accepted that there's a lot we don't know about catatonia and that I'm lucky to have somewhat of a warning. But, oh well, maybe one day we might have answers. This is just how it is for me, so it might not be how it is for anyone else. But if you too experience catatonia and have warning signs, or not, let me know in the comment section down below. Catatonia is pretty rare, so I'm always interested in hearing other people's experiences, and it kind of gets a little lonely sometimes. 
But other than that, thanks for joining me in making the uncomfortable comfortable. I will see you in the next video. Bye-bye.